if you've seen some of my other videos around converting VHS tapes into a digital format, then you would have seen that I recommend using a device called an upscaler to increase the resolution of the analog signal into a digital one. If you are not sure what an upscaler is or which one you should get, well, this video is for you. I'm gonna go over what a video upscaler is, my review of 10 different upscalers that I tried, all ranging from $15 to $150. And I'll tell you about the issues that I ran into, if any. I'm also gonna do what features are included, and we will discuss that four by three and 16 by nine comment that I keep getting. I will also share with you what ultimately I chose as I plan to redigitize all of my home movies, again, utilizing what I've learned through this process. Just so you know, I funded this 100% out of my own pocket. I don't represent any of these vendors, and this is just my opinion on my observations. Your mileage may vary based upon the equipment and ultimately the quality of the tapes, so just keep that in mind. Before we continue on our discussion around upscalers, if you could do me a huge favor and make this the best YouTube channel by hitting that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So what is upscaling, or what is an upscaler? In short, video upscaling is the process of taking a lower resolution video or image and upscaling it to a higher one. Most TVs and other connected devices like a PlayStation or a Roku, well, they automatically upscale smaller resolution videos during playback, so you really don't even notice it happening behind the scene. But with all that said, when you have something like a VHS tape and you want to upscale it manually, you would either need to use software or hardware to do so. But before we can even use software to upscale, we need to get the VHS tape into digital form first using the hardware. And if you have not seen my video on this yet, I'll put a link at the end of the video for you as it's something that you wanna go check out. But what we're gonna talk about over in this video is the hardware version of upscaling. Now, when you think about resolutions, I want you to think about this. An NTSC analog signal, which is what old TV broadcasts and VHS tapes contain, can be as small as a 320 by 240 pixel image, and that image is roughly 77,000 pixels or tiny dots on the screen that make up the picture. Now, if we were to increase the size of that image to say 640 by 480, we would go from 77,000 pixels to roughly 307,000 pixels. And then if we were to take that to 1080p, which is high definition, which is 1920 by 1080, we're now talking over 2 million pixels. At 8K, it's over 30 million. So if we're going to go from 77 pixels with the NTSC signal to over 2 million at the 1080p, which is what all of these upscalers support, there's a lot of missing pixels that need to be guessed at in this process. In short, that is what this hardware or upscaler is gonna try to do for you using an algorithm that's built into it that does its best guess at the missing parts and tries to give you a larger picture for something that really doesn't exist. If you're curious what those algorithms are or which ones exist, I'll put a link to a website in the description below if you really wanna geek out on the topic. But for today, we're not gonna go into that level of things. Instead, we're just gonna try out each one of these and see which one works out the best. For this video, my process was to purchase different upscalers and run the same test on all of them. The process in short was this. Using my VCR or DVD combo, I used the audio video jacks on the back with a standard composite cable. For those of you that are curious, my device doesn't support the S cable for VHS. So I've seen that in the comment quite a bit. The composite cable then fed the analog signal into the upscaler, and then the upscaler converted it into a digital format going out an HDMI cable, which then goes into my Elgato HD60 capture card, from which point I use the OBS Studio software to capture it on my PC. The video for the test was the same in all cases. It was a rafting trip that I did more than 20 years ago. These here are the 10 different devices that I test, and of them, one was just the wrong thing. I didn't read the description correctly and it actually converts digital to analog, which is the opposite direction from where I wanted to go. So this one got removed from the list. Then there were two devices that just flat out didn't work. I'd hook them up and they would just never get a picture. They would just end up with a black screen, which is this one and this one. So we're just gonna remove those also from the test. The last one that I have to remove is this one here, which is the Open Source Scan Converter or OSSC. It actually was the most expensive of all of them, but it's really meant for doing retro gaming systems. So it supports a lot of additional features for handling uh, different refresh rates and things like that. But unfortunately, in doing some research, it doesn't really support handle converting like TV signals, just like VHS tapes. What I was left with are these six upscalers. So you know what we're dealing with? What I have here are the AVI to HDMI, which runs for about 
the uh, RCA to HDMI, which runs for $16. This Raz Fox device, which ran for $30. The Yatronix, which ran for $38. The Easy Cell RCA to HDMI, which ran for $40. And of course the StarTech, which was the highest one in the bunch here, which we ran for 92. For these six different upscalers, pretty much they all do the same thing. You, you input an analog signal and they output an HDMI video. Now, I chose to keep my review of these devices in the price range of under $150 because there are some really expensive upscalers out there that are way outside the scope of this video and my budget. For example, this is the XRGB Mini Frame Meister, which runs for $1,759. I'm sure it's really nice, but I can't afford that or justify it, frankly. So, so together, let's just take a look at the pretty picture and, and admire it for a moment. Pretty nice, huh? In testing all six of these devices, I had two real outcomes. Everything worked expected, which really only one device achieved, which was the RCA device. For the other five, I experienced two distinct issues. One, discoloration, where I would get this strange discolored top of the screen like this, where things would just get weird or kind of pinkish or red, and it would just distort the colors. The second issue was a form of line noise, which looked like static, as you see here. And I found that it ended up coming from the cheap power supplies that came with the actual device. Now, in the case where the discoloration was happening, there was really nothing I could do to correct the issue. The reason for this is a bit technical, but in short, it comes down to this. An analog signal consists of three distinct parts, the picture, the color or chroma, and the luminance or contrast. That signal is transmitted down the same wire when you use a composite cable. And when the upscaler gets that signal, it has to break apart the stream and build a digital picture out of what it sees and put it on the TV for you. Unfortunately, this doesn't work in every situation and you end up with this discoloration. But in my case, three of the devices failed consistently. Now, if you get this issue, one solution I read about was to try to use the S-Video cable if your player and the upscaler support them. As the S-Video cable will send the luminance or the contrast and the color signals down separate wires, where the composite cable, like in my case, sends everything down a single wire. By separating it, you essentially solve the problem. As for the noise issue, this problem really bugged me, mainly because it seemed to affect all of the more expensive upscaler devices, and it just made me think they all just shipped junk power supplies, which uh, they did. The way I figured this out, was I found that the units that came with a USB power cable and I plugged them into my PC USB port did not have the line noise. This made me think that because the power was clean coming out of the PC, I wondered if a better power supply would remove the noise. So to test that theory, I created a power cord from an old adapter and hooked it up to my bench power supply, knowing that the power it produced would be clean. And when I did this, the noise went away. Now, I did not want to go and tell you all to go get a bench power supply. I mean, it's very handy for the things that I do, but that just seemed like overkill. So I found this five volt adapter that produces clean power after a few tries on Amazon, meaning I bought a few dozen power supplies and this was the one that worked. Luckily, it's only $15, so it shouldn't break the bank. But if you do plan to get one of the upscalers, just plan on buying this additional power supply. You'll thank me later. Now, let's cover this four by three and 16 by nine aspect ratio topic. A few of you have made the point that most of the sample videos that I shared in my other VHS videos were in a 16 by nine format. And this means that the young Joe looks more like this older Joe with these handsome chubby cheeks. The reason for this has a few kind of key points. First off, the aspect ratio is governed by the original video, and then the upscaler needs to support the proper resolution on output, and you also need to make sure that your capturing device can record the proper resolution, or you'll just be right back where you started. In the case of all of these upscalers, except for one, they only support two output resolutions, a 720p and a 1080p, both of which are 16 by nine. So if you want a four by three resolution, you only get really one option, and that is the Yatronix device. It supports seven different output resolutions, two of which are four by three, two of which are 16 by nine, and two other ones. If you choose any of the other devices, you will be stuck with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Then if you choose to go with a four by three resolution, you'll wanna make sure that your capture card supports it and you can create the video correctly. I was able to do this with my Elgato HC60 and tweak in the OBS studio to capture the video on a four by three ratio, but on a screen that was 16 by nine. 
Then I post-processed the video, cropping it using a custom rendering format in Sony Vegas. So in comparing the six devices, here are my thoughts. The AVI to HDMI, the Raz Fox, and the Easy Cell HDMI all had color issues. So personally, I pass on them. Surprisingly, the $16 RCA to HDMI device was the one that worked without any issues, no power supply problems, and no color issues. But it does lack the S-Video support and multiple resolutions. So if you like the 16x9, you'll be fine. But if you want to do the 4x3, you can't go with this one. That leaves me with our next choice, which is the Yatronix, which is $38. It has three different inputs, both the standard composite, the S-Video and HDMI, and it also supports seven output resolutions that allows for the 4x3 and 16x9 formats, if you want them. It did have the noise issue, so plan to spend the extra $15 to get the better power supply. But ultimately, this is the one that I would recommend, and this is the one that I plan to use to convert all my home movies in the future. The last one, of course, is the StarTech. It had this noise issue, only supports 720p, and it was the most expensive of the bunch. So frankly, I would just pass on this one altogether. So in conclusion, and the highlight of the show, here is the output for my favorite, the Itronix Upscaler. People have asked why all of my sample videos were in the 16 by nine and not a four by three ratio. So here's a small sample of the four by three video from the Itronix Upscaler. I have had a lot of requests to share longer versions of these samples, and I'll try to put together another video to do just that. I have the same video in multiple formats from multiple devices that I've used in all of my videos that I've put out here today. So keep an eye out for that in the future. So if you're gonna go do the upscaling, I would go with the Atronix Upscaler, hands down. For the video capture device, I would use and I am using the Elgato HD60 Pro, which is an internal capture card in my PC. But if you have a laptop or another device, I would use the Elgato HD60X, which is an external device made for laptops. I hope this has helped answer your questions around upscalers. And if you think of anything, please let me know in the comments. As always, I appreciate your time and I've been enjoying the great feedback, so keep it coming. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button as it'll help me kind of grow the channel. As always, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day and catch you next time then you would have seen that I recommend using a device called an upscaler to increase the res... Nice timing, PC.